Thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Chameleon Sessions. I'm making a video entirely about uh, my setup, okay, and also a lot of my work process or the flow of reason why I set up my equipment the way I do for my own personal workflow preferences. So let's get into uh, what equipment I use and how I have it set up and also a lot of uh, how my, uh, my sampling process is to make it uh, more flowing and how I like to sample everything. We'll go into the breakdown, how everything is connected, why I have it connected for that reason, and uh, let's just see how it goes. All right, so when it comes to uh, setting up your own studio and your own studio work, you really need to think about what your workflow is like. So what I mean by that is uh, simply, what is your centerpiece? Is it a, uh, is it like an MPC? Is it an SP? Is it a machine? And then you gotta think, okay, it will, is this particular unit that is my centerpiece where majority of my creation is being made? Is it computer-based? Is it standalone? Okay, and then from there, you would be able to determine what is going to work best for your uh, creation process. So in, in my creation process, this is the only thing and you are just gonna to have to figure out uh, from here what would work best, okay, for in your application. If you have similar equipment, because a lot of peeps have an MPC, a lot of peeps have the SP, and then from there it just kind of branches off to uh, your own personal taste for uh, anything else extra, right? But for the most part, before this this centerpiece, which is my creation centerpiece, is the MPC, and then from there, my second one would have to be in a, a, the SP. But before that, what is it that I am doing before that? Well, the first thing that I'm doing is my sources. What are my sources? Uh, where am I drawing these sounds from that I'm inputting into the MPC? It can be a handful of things, okay? So for me personally, I use more than just sampling from a, a record. Now the uh, turntable is a big centerpiece of my, uh, my sampling source, but I also have where I pull from synthesizers and I also pull from uh, cassette recorders. If you can see like these, you've seen these in my previous like uh, Chameleon Theory episodes where I use these. Well, I use these to sample, okay? But I want to have like one central place where I can be able to manipulate the sounds. And I'm not talking about adding effects before I sample it. What I mean by that is, is I want to be able to manipulate its, uh, its EQ process. You see what I'm saying? So from EQing, I have a small mixer that all these things are connected to that feed into the inputs of my MPC. Okay, so by having all of my sample sources into this mixer and all of them going out into my MPC, it gives me an opportunity to be able to change the EQ of that sound before I even sample it. Okay, why do you want to do that? There's a big, very important reason why you want to do something like that. If you ever noticed that when you sample something, and you're feeling that beat and you're going and you're really deep into this beat. We're talking about hours later, right? But there's that one sound that's within a sample that you simply cannot remove. You could go back and resample it, but now you have been so exhausted and in the creative mode that sometimes you just don't feel like going back and stopping your flow from what you're doing then. So now you've finished even further into the process and now you have a completed work and that's always going to be in the back of your mind. That one sound that you wish just was not there. It could be something simple. It could be a, a shaker in the background that you just re really wish it wasn't as dominant as it is in your beat. And you could have avoided that if only, if only you thought about this and had it fed into a mixer and adjusted to me cue levels to be able to pull those down and make some other sounds more dominant to kind of uh, 
uh, override on top of that, okay? So it dominates that, and especially since I compress everything, whenever I have a dominating sound, that's going to be predominant inside that uh, beat, okay? So we're gonna work on some of those examples, and, I'm kinda, and this is a big, important thing of how I set up my whole setup. So if it sounds, if the, the title of this doesn't really sound like what I'm trying to explain, it has a very large part as to how you're going to set up your work. So I'm gonna give you this example and then we'll go off into the other thing. So before I do that, let's go ahead and think of this in a mapping sense, okay? So my NPC has no upgrades whatsoever. I don't have eight outs, I don't have uh, effects uh, upgrade that you could have gotten back in the day. The only thing that I've done that is considered an upgrade on my NPC is the memory upgrade. Okay, so there's more chips in there to be able to give me more memory that gives me more sample time. Okay, aside from that, there's nothing as you can see from this video here that there is nothing added to that NPC at all. Okay, so I have to be very, very conscious when I'm thinking of making a beat what I think it's going to be in the future, which I can't predict 100%, but I can I already have an idea. I am myself. I don't have to worry about anybody else while I'm making all this music. I know what I want to sound like, and there's no rules whatsoever that's going to hold me back from what I want at the as an end result. From the right over, so we're talking about outputs over. I have two outputs that are being fed into this SP, okay? And those inputs I can use as resampling, or I can play whatever's on my NPC in real time by using this external source. And now I have advantage of manipulating my NPC just like I would with SP samples. Because I have all of these effects at my disposal for my NPC. And I do that quite often. Not only that, I could also sample out from my NPC and resample it and manipulate those sounds even further if I desired to do so. In my SP, well now I have 16 pads here plus my uh, three other banks. And I also have a multitude of banks here at 12 pads a piece. So I have a lot of sounds that I could have at my disposal at any time in real time and still play on these keyboards, okay? So over here to the right is most of my live setup. Everything to the left of me is what I use as sample mode and very occasionally I will use in a live setup, okay? So as you see from the top I have the Yamaha CS5, it's an old school, it's from like late, late 70s or early 80s, fully analog, it's a mono synth. Okay, very simple, but I love the way it produces bass sounds, and I will use that if I'm not sampling uh, cable buzz to manipulate as bass. The second down is my JX3P, that's a Rollin JX3P, that's also old school, very early 80s. It's actually the first uh, uh, synthesizer that came out with MIDI. Very primitive, but it's a uh, it's my favorite synth that is unfortunately not working right now and I must get it fixed because that is my favorite synthesizer out of everything that I have. Uh, number three is the Rollin System 8 which really has so many similar sounds as that JX3P. I could stand to get rid of that, but I just love my JX3 so damn much, I will never sell that thing. But the System 8 is fantastic. So all three of these uh, keyboards, I can I have fed into this little Yamaha MG1012, uh, 102, okay? So it has two outs, 10 inputs. So I can have up to 10 channels uh, in this thing. And that's what I use being fed the two channel outs into my MPC, okay? So my turntable, anything that I use like these cassette, these cassette recorders I use, and those synthesizers, and if I wanted to plug in a, uh, a microphone to be able to mic up my guitars, like an acoustic uh, a guitar with, the, uh, with an amplifier, or sample anything else like as far as folly, right? So uh, if I have any kind of field recordings, I can feed them into that. So this is my main board for sampling. So now we're going to see why you would like to have a, a mixer being fed into your inputs of whatever you are using to sample before it's in a DAW. We're gonna go ahead and spin this record real quick. We're gonna go into sample mode of my MPC and we're gonna put this record on. 
and listen to it right quick. Okay, we're gonna turn this one on. When a young man was a strong man, all the people, they stepped back when a young man walked by. I'm gonna record, I'm gonna record that, that vo uh, vocal real quick, okay? When, I'm gonna sample it into my MPC. Said a young man ain't got nothing in the world these days. All right, so now that I have that in here, I'm going to uh, keep this and I'm going to assign it to a channel. Ain't got, man, 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 ain't got nothing. So in now the I have it sampled days. into for my record player, right? Well, that's no damn different than just having your record player directly inside into the inputs of my MPC. But let's listen to this. Ain't got nothing in the world these days. There's a couple things in there that I noticed that I am not happy with whatsoever. Okay, the biggest thing is is that it has a lot of low end rumble going on in there, which can really interfere in the future if you have a kick. Okay, your kick may not be, I'm not saying it will be, will not be, but it may not be as punchy because you have so many low frequencies going on in that fucking vocal sample if you just let it be like that. It'll interfere with your kick. It may even interfere with any kind of hi-hats because we have so much crackle and crisp going on. You see what I'm saying? These are things that I always think about simply because I am predominantly producing all of my music within hardware and simply dumping it down into two tracks into my DAW. Okay, so these are things I really have to think about. And if you're doing the similar type of project, then these are definitely things that you must consider if you're trying to get the best sculpted sound, okay? So, uh, let's, let's redo this now with the, using and utilizing the advantage of what is a, uh, a mixer, okay? So we're gonna go back into sample mode. We have this saved, remember. Well, these days. Nothing in the world these days. All right, so now we're gonna go in and sample that same exact thing. All right, so now that I have both of these, I'm gonna keep that. Let's eliminate that damn sound. And let's engage the uh, MPC. So now that I got this engaged within the MPC, and let's go ahead and listen to uh, the samples. There's one. Ain't got nothing in the world these days. That was the original. A young man, a young man, a young man. Ain't got nothing in the world. Let me put these on note off. Ain't got nothing in the world these days. Now that drum sounds great. But what I'm after is. I'm after the, zo uh, the the vocal, and I'm not after that drum at this particular sample. Man, a young man. Let's go ahead and just match them up right, okay? You hear there's a lot more vinyl crackle going on in that first one since I didn't eliminate it. But there's also a lot of low end noise that I can hear in there. So that can really help whenever you are uh, sampling anything. And you really just gotta think about the future. 
that's why I love to have my uh, everything hooked up that I'm going to use to sample in a mixer because there's some things that you just want to be able to pre-EQ before you sample it into the MPC. That's why it's so important to me to have that. Okay, so that is a perfect example of what I do on every single sample that I do, whether it be from a record, a keyboard, I'm always thinking ahead as much as I possibly can. It doesn't always come out perfect, and it's never going to be, but I'm not really after perfect. I just don't want shit to, uh, to sound too muddy, and that's what can happen if I let that go on, especially if it's a long sample source. When you're doing short samples and stuff, it's not as important, or it's not going to be as affected. But if you are using long samples, and especially you start to hear this pick up a lot more, whether you tune up or you tune down, okay? I'll give you an example. So I'm gonna take these two samples. Let's tune this dude down 100 values. That lower one is going to cut through a lot better whenever you have a total beat going. I don't have anything really set up into this just to show you other than that. And now let's go up a higher. Let's go up a higher. Let's go 100 values up instead of 100 values down. That really showed me a lot. There is actually a lot more noise in the background of that original if I had not ran it through a mixer. This one killed a lot of that low end. And when you're doing low end and you're adding 100 values higher, well, it's doing nothing but taking that low rumble and just tuning it higher. So now it's a lot more audible, especially if you're going to manipulate your samples that way. It's not there, and it's gonna cut through a lot better. So that's why it's important to me to have a mixer there, okay? Now the second part of my setup, on this side here, I kinda went through it before, but um, I like to have this Prophet 8 is my main keyboard that I use for whenever I'm doing live uh, video takes, okay? Or just live recording into my DAW. So I have this Prophet 8 on, and it's in four different channels into my Mackie mixer that you see there. And I label everything so I know exactly what is what. It just makes everything a lot faster whenever I'm trying to uh, reach certain things in the middle of a, a workflow. You know what I mean? It's just going to make your workflow a lot easier if you know exactly where everything is at. And sometimes you just forget, man. You know, Even though I've been with this equipment for so many damn years, you just forget sometimes when you're in the heat of uh, making something where things are at as far as the technical side because I'm just thinking with my other side of the brain while I'm creating, you know what I'm saying? So now I have my SP hooked up. So my MPC is the main sample sampler, okay? My... SP is my secondary sampler. So I can have sounds being fed into here. See what I'm saying? So now I got this sound going. Now I can just you know, fuck around with this, right? If I want to manipulate now my uh, my keyboard while I'm playing this beat, right? So now I have just this at my disposal, which is my primary.
saying? Now these are all like not really on a loop. So anyway, that's why I use that that's pretty much how I do my setup for like live. You see what I'm saying? I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope also that I gave you some clarity as to how and why I set up my equipment the way I do. If you liked it, give it a like button and definitely subscribe. I do anticipate making a lot more of these types of videos as much as I possibly can. So anyhow, much love and peace. This is Chameleon Sessions. See y'all soon.